All right, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna weigh the cart that we're gonna use in this lab along with the weight that goes on it. Uh, the cart weighs 224.4 grams. The weight that we're gonna put in the cart weighs 199.8 grams. If we add the two together, we get the total weight of the car. Our setup is going to be a ramp that we're going to pull the cart up. Now, the ramp has a change in height uh, that is equal to the height of the book. So we always want to measure to the top of the height of the books. So I've marked where the top of the height of the books is also the height of the ramp. And we're going to measure the height at that point. So this point we're going to mark right the height of the ramp here and we can read it off of the meter stick and it looks like it is somewhere between 17 and 18 centimeters and you can read it yourself now the cart will be coming from the table up to this point and so we can see at the same point um, right here between 74 and 75 centimeters, we can see that the tape is that far up the ramp. So the distance we're gonna pull the cart is around 74.6 centimeters, and the height that the cart will go to is right here around 17.4 centimeters. If I pull the cart up the ramp with a spring scale, as I pull it, I can see what the force is that the uh, that is required to pull it up the ramp. Okay, Let's zoom in here a little bit, and you can see that the force going up the ramp is pretty close, right, to about one meter. The first time we pulled the cart up the ramp we had it rolling. The second time, we're gonna turn it over so it slides up the ramp on its surface, which means that it will have more friction. But we're gonna keep the weight on it so that we are comparing the same weight uh, for the cart. If we go back up here and we pull the cart up the ramp, we can see, whoops, it's been on force we can see uh, that the force needed to pull it up the ramp at a constant speed is significantly higher, and we can read it off of the scale. We've now changed the ramp so that it's steeper. We pushed the books closer to the uh, end of the ramp so that it sits higher up in the air. However, we remarked the ramp so that now the height of the books is uh, still marked on the ramp, right? So the height of the books should still be about the same as it was before. And you can see that it is still between 17 and 18 centimeters, and you can read it off of the meter stick. However, the length from the tabletop to the ramp is now significantly shorter. And you can see that it is between 52 and 53 centimeters. Um, right? So uh, it looks like close to 52.7 centimeters. I can measure how much force it takes to pull the cart up the ramp uh, while it's rolling. And you can see that we can get a fairly consistent uh, force, which is larger now that the ramp is steeper. I've turned the cart over so that it's sliding and I'm pulling it up the cart, up the ramp slowly. And we can see that the force is now significantly higher. All right, here's the lab sheet. And there are a couple things uh, that I want to point out. Uh, one is that this whole column is calculated, right? You're going to use 
math to get all the answers in this column, okay? The columns to the left, these guys are all measured, okay? And so when you're doing this lab, when you're looking through the video, for example, these are all things you're gonna get from the video, okay? Now up here, it says you're calculating the potential energy. Well, we have two equations for potential energy up here, right? One of them has mass, gravity, and height. The other just has weight and height. Well, if you look, we calculated the mass. We have the height, and I've given you the constant for gravity. So that should tell you how you're going to calculate, which equation you'll use to calculate the potential energy. Down here, it says you are calculating the work of pulling. Well, up here we have our work equation, and it says force times distance. And again, you've got the force and you've got the distance for each of these work, uh, to, so that you can calculate each of these works, okay? When you get done, you'll be working on the back, and on the back, we have a question from our notes. We also have a question that simply asks you about what was the same, either it was the height, the length of the ramp, or the force, and you should be able to tell just by looking at the data which was the same, or looking at the video or the data, which was the same for all. Uh, how do we know that the change in potential energy was the same for all three systems? Well, it would help if you knew what the potential energy equation was, and remember that the equation is on the front, and so um, whatever is, uh, in order for the potential energy to be the same, all the parts of the potential energy equation should be the same. Um, it then says, which was closer to the work required to just lift the cart straight up? And the uh, work required to lift the cart straight up, that's another way of saying the potential energy change. Okay, so which was, the more, uh, which was closer uh, to the potential energy change? Was it the rolling cart or the sliding cart? And then here we're gonna draw forces, and this is basically a free body diagram. And so I'm asking you to go back to our last unit and think, what arrows should I draw on this cart? Uh, how many forces do you think we should draw? Lastly, uh, which of these forces uh, added energy to the system? Remember, the energy of the system should be constant unless something from the outside does work on it. And so the question is, what force is actually doing work on our system? Hopefully that will help when you do the write-up.